Hi, I'm Dr Lily from Melbourne Climate Futures and welcome to Climate Kids, where we answer the questions about climate change that you want answered. In today's episode, we have a great question from Tom. Go ahead, Tom, we're all listening. Hi, my name's Tom and I'm six years old. And my question is, why do they keep growing hogs in Australia without permission? That's a great question, Tom. And I'm guessing that you're talking about digging up fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas and other minerals like copper and gold, sometimes without the permission of the person who owns the land. First, a few numbers about Australia and fossil fuels. In the Olympics of digging up fossil fuels, Australia certainly punches above our weight. We dig up huge amounts of coal and drill for large amounts of oil and gas. Lyndon, our roving reporter from the future, can you fill our viewers in a little about what you in the future know about what we do now, which is in your past? Lily, I'm only a baby where you are now. But yeah, I do know a little bit about the amount of fossil fuels that you are currently digging up. I mean, not you, but you back there in the past. You measure the amount of coal that's dug up in joules, so the amount of energy in the coal. The joule is a unit of energy. An apple, like this one, has four and a half joules. So how much coal energy is being dug up back there? Well, in 2022, it was 11.5 quintillion joules. What is a quintillion, I hear you ask? Yeah, I know, right? First of all, there's a million, and then a billion, and then a trillion, and then a quadrillion, and then a quintillion. So that is a lot of zeros, which makes a lot of coal. Wow! And we send 70% of what we dig up overseas. And none of the fossil fuels that we send overseas counts when we talk about Australia's greenhouse gas emissions. It counts towards the tally of the country it gets sent to. Tom, which is a bit like giving your little brother open pots of paint and then saying it had nothing to do with you when he paints the wall with them. We're also mining a lot of things that are very important to the technology we need to fight climate change. Batteries, for example, need minerals like copper and lithium, and we have lots of those in Australia. But we do need to stop digging up fossil fuels. As you know, most of the time, I live in a future where people like you worked really hard to end the use of fossil fuels, and life's pretty good here. What you might not know is that I occasionally pop my head into alternative futures. And the one where we continue to dig up and use fossil fuels is a pretty horrible future to be in. It's way too hot, there's lots of floods and bushfires, and it is a whole lot less of a pleasant place to live than my current future. So why are people still digging up and using fossil fuels where you are back in the past? Well, it's not your fault, but your way of life has been set up to depend on fossil fuels being burnt. Most of your electricity or your parents' cars, for example, run on petrol, which is a fossil fuel. Also, lots of people are making lots of money from fossil fuels and not enough has been done to force them to stop. Where I am, the cars are electric and people make money in lots of different ways. But Tom, I think you're also asking about something you might have seen on the news. You might have seen First Nations Australians, for example, trying to stop drilling for oil and gas on their land. Why can't they say no when it's their land? Now, this is a legal answer, so I better put on my lawyer's hat. Lily. What, Lyndon? That's not a lawyer's hat. I think it's a lawyer's hat, Lyndon. What would you know? Anyway, this story starts back in the days of Queen Elizabeth. No, not that Queen Elizabeth, the other one. I'm talking about Queen Elizabeth I. She was alive over 400 years ago. And in the year 1568, she had this huge fight with a lord called the Earl of Northumberland whose other, less lordy name 
was Thomas Percy. He had dug a big hole at the back of his house. That's a fancy house. And had found gold and copper. Now Elizabeth I, she didn't like Thomas Percy and she didn't want him to keep this gold and copper. She thought it should be hers. And when you're the queen, things often go your way. She brought together several judges to form a court to decide who the golden copper belonged to. And the court decided they belonged to the queen. And in Australia, we still have those rules from 1568, plus quite a few more to say that almost all the metals, precious minerals, oil and gas belong to the queen. I mean the king, I mean the crown which in these days means our government. But what about this gold I just found on my time traveling trips between different realities? Is it mine? Sorry, Lyndon, it belongs to the government. Ah, oh, and so this is why landowners can't stop companies fracking gas from First Nations people's country. Because the government owns the gas and says who can come and take it. Exactly, Lyndon. They have owned the land for 65 thousand years and our rules only date back 400 years at the very most. It doesn't seem totally fair does it? The bit that I can't understand from your time, it just seems so backwards, is that your government, the Crown, pays these fossil fuel companies money that they have collected from taxes and that's the money your parents pay to the government. What? And in 2021-22, $11.6 billion of this money was given to fossil fuel companies? Yeah, I agree, Lyndon. Using the money that these kids' parents pay in taxes to subsidise the digging up and burning of fossil fuels is pretty silly. And I can tell you from where I am in your future, fossil fuel subsidies ended when some kids like you, in fact, it was you! You wrote letters and made videos telling the Prime Minister and your local governments just how bad you thought it was that subsidies were being given to fossil fuel companies. You wrote letters and you told them it was enough. You needed to move into this future. Thanks for joining us for another exciting episode of Climate Kids.